second video and it's a q a i've asked some i mean my followers on instagram to ask me some questions that they want me to answer and i've made a list it's very very long y'all asked me a lot of questions and i will be answering them right now so let's go first of all i'd like to start with questions that i'm frequently asked the first question in is how did you come up with the Coxanova combo? This one. When the new code of points came in, the gymnasts that have that would have more flexibility would be an advantage because they could do more elements. It was the combos that came in action. So the combos are like two elements put together. And so it's a lot easier if you're flexible to put example like ponche and then do the scorpion, you know. Scorpion, I don't know if this is a valid combo, but stuff like this, you have to have flexibility for that. And I was never flexible enough to get these elements without like deduction. So I I wasn't a disadvantage. What I thought is what can I do? that is not that hard for me to do and will give me points. And then I thought about the jump butterfly. I've never done it, I've never learned it, but then I thought it couldn't be that hard. Like it's a jump and I'm, I'm very good at jumps. I do only jumps, you know, in my routines I have like seven to six jumps. I specialize more in jumps. And then after that, when I did the attitude, notice that my attitude is on the same leg as if I would jump butterfly. So then I said, what if I just combine them both? It looked not good at all at the first time. Well, because for butterfly, you have to go down and then go up for it to count. But I, I just did like, like this, you know? <laughs> I didn't go down, so it didn't really count. So I showed my coach and then my coach was like, nah, Nah. Don't put it, don't put it, it's not gonna count. They're not gonna count it for you, it doesn't look good. And I'm like, no, no, I'm gonna do it better. I'm gonna do it better, wait, wait. And then I took some time, I practiced it more, I practiced it more, and I showed it to her, she's like, mm. I don't think it's gonna count, honestly. You're doing this for nothing, like, it's not gonna count. I'm like, it will count. Let me let me just practice a little more. And I practiced a little more, and then I went to most school, I did this combination, and then everybody was talking about it. Anyways, but my coach didn't really want me to put it in my routine because she thought it's not gonna count because I'm not doing it good enough. But I guess it did. I guess it made an impression because it was a good combo, I guess. I don't know. But this is how I came up with it, actually. I Just because I was limited in my possibilities and I thought jump, pivot together, very good. Second question, um, were you always good? This is a frequently asked question. No, of course not. Like if you look at champions right now, like that are, that are like, if you look at good athletes right now, I think most of us share the same story about not being good, working hard, and then getting good. To be good in seniors, you have to know how, how to fail. You have to know how to lose. You have to know how to work hard. You have to know how to not get um, discouraged by failure. For all this to happen, it takes for you to be bad at the beginning. I was good with apparatus. I was always good with apparatus. I was never good with free. I was always last. And I remember uh, I'd always like get first place for row and then eighth for like free. And I was like, mm. and when I went levels up, there was um, my current teammate, Susanna Shabazan. She always beat me, like always, always. I could never beat her. There was like this one time where I beat her and who but only because she like dropped three times. She won't win. You feel me as I didn't drop miraculously and I got first place, but that was like the only time. After that I went to provincial and provincial levels. I stayed in provincial levels because nobody wanted to take me in other. I was not good enough. Anyways. And when everybody left for like junior and senior and I stayed for like provincial, of course, I was beating everybody. Of course, I was beating everybody. 
And then for my last year in 4B, which is like a provincial level around the same age as going into junior, I was first everywhere, it was very easy. And then one of the judges suggested to my coach to bring me to junior to try. And then my coach was like, nah, she's not gonna, she's gonna be last there anyways. Like, why Why would you put her in junior? Like, she's gonna be last. Who cares? Whatever, okay, let's put her in junior. And then for my first year, I remember going to my first elite and first Canadians and my coach was like, um, If you get in top 50, it would be very good. Like very, very good. And I'm like, I'm, I'm not gonna get into 50, like it's horrible. First year, I was 11th all around. Not to brag, but like nobody believed in me when I was small. I don't even know what I did. Why didn't I give up? Like, if I really think about it, there was... Whatever. I was a good junior. It's just I was never the best junior or the best that or the best that. I was always behind someone, you know? And in junior as well, I had my two teammates. My first year junior, I was always last after them, after Susanna Shevzian and Elizabeth Savchenko. No way I could pass them. Elizabeth Savchenko was very far in front of us, but Susanna was still beating me. And uh, it's the second and third year I started advancing and advancing in my rankings. And my third year I, I became third all around in Canada. But it's very different when you're third in junior or senior because senior is a very, very like harsh competition. Like there's a lot of good seniors. I mean, there's a lot of good juniors too. It's just that in senior, you have to be a lot more stronger to get like at least even in top eight than in junior, you know what I mean? So it's around my senior years um, that I started, you know, going up and up. Then after that, COVID hit. And after that, I'm here. Sorry, good. But yeah, in general, I was, I started being good at the end. I mean, at the end now. You know, I've had a couple of people ask me if I was always so jumpy, I was always so strong and everything. And this relates to the first question. I never turned, I never balanced, I never like I was never, you know, Kramarin style. For me to win, I had to rely on something that I could do, which is jumps, which is muscles, because you can grow them, you can better them. It's like you can grow muscles, right? You can become stronger, but you can't really become as flexible as Soldatova if you're like a stick and you can't bend, you know? The only way I could actually win and become something is through jumping, is through jumps or muscles. So I concentrated all my efforts on that. I concentrated all my efforts on learning new jumps, on learning new um, skills that require a lot of muscle or like, you know, stamina. So that's why I'm jumpy, only because I didn't have another choice. And you can become jumpy too, if you work hard. Question, how did you learn your switch split? I think it was summertime. And we were just doing the routine and randomly, I decided to look at the quote of points and see what elements are there, like new elements to do because I was bored. And then I see this like strange figure that I'd never seen before. And I'm like, like, coach, what is this? And then she's like, oh yeah, that's this that jump. In my time, we would always do that jump, you know? I'm like, oh, that's so cool. And then I tried it a couple of times. And I'm like, oh, that's bad. And she's like, Oh, okay, that's not even that bad. That's that's good, that's good, but it's very far, so they're not gonna count it. I'm like, oh, you challenge me? Oh, okay, okay. And I'm like, watch me. And then I started learning it. I started doing it a lot of times, and then, I, and then at some point I just perfected it. And after that, I would put it into my routine because my coach saw that I can do it. And that's it. I just saw a new element. I'm like, oh, I'm gonna do it. And then my coach bet me. So yeah, so I did it. <laughs> me, it works a lot when my coach like him. I'm like, okay, watch me. <clears throat> Thank you so much for watching, guys. And this is one of my parts of the Q&A because there will be more parts because there were so many questions. Thank you so much for that, too. If you have more questions you want me to include in the next parts, please comment down below and I will...
be sure to add them too. Don't forget to leave a like, a comment and subscribe and see you in the next video.